Uh, good day, everyone, and welcome to today's what? Welcome to today's section. And in today's section, we are going to be talking about the what? We are going to be talking about the general overview of financial world, financial accounting at this particular world, at this particular level. In terms of what, what are the words? What are the different things that we are what? What are the different things that we are going to be talking about in the words in the subsequent world, in the subsequent classes? So this particular session is just basically meant for what, for the introduction in terms of what, what are the things that we have in what in financial accounting, so that as, they, as we are moving on, every one of us will be aware of what. Oh, these are certain things that we need to talk about. So this particular class is just meant for the word, for the general overview of this particular word subject. And we are looking at it from the angles of the world, the angles of the syllabus themselves in terms of what, what are the things that we want, what are the things that we have. So if I go to what, this is the syllabus guide of the Institute now, relating to what now, relating to financial world, relating to financial accounting. Relating to what, relating to financial accounting. So in terms of what, what are the things that we are going to be what, what are the things that we are going to be talking about? So by the time that we're word, by the time that we are going for the word for the exam, we should be competent in some of these words. We should be very, very competent in some of these key areas. And one of the words. So by the times of word, by the time we are through with the word with the entire syllabus, at the end of the word, at the end of this paper, a candidate should be able to word should do some of this following. Meaning that word, you should be able to have a word, a good knowledge of some of these word key area. And one of them is the word, the knowledge and understanding and application of the word, the fundamental word principle, the process, the concept, the convention, and the regulatory word, the regulatory framework when you are preparing what, when you are preparing this particular word financial statement. Because in what, in accounting, majority of the things that we are talking about, there's a word, there's a regulation for what, there's a regulation. So majority of things that we are doing, there's a word, there's a regulation for what, there's a regulation for it. So if you are preparing a certain word, if you are preparing a certain things in what, in accounting, and that's why, let me tell you something, financial accounting is very, very simple. Even accounting as well is very, very simple to practice. And it is also very simple to what to learn. Why is this simple to practice and why is this simple to what to learn is that majority of the things that we are talking about, there's already a word, a regulation for it. There's already a word, a regulation for it that if this particular thing occur, this is how you are going to treat it. If this one occur, this is how you are going to treat it. So there's already a regulation. What you just need to try as much as possible to do is what understand that particular regulation, then apply it. So at the end of this course, is you're able to have this understanding. Understand, and it's not only about understanding it. You also need to learn how to you can apply it in a practical scenario as well. Understand the principle. Understand the word, the process. What are the some of the concepts and convention that we have in accounting? And what are the some of the word, the regulatory framework that we are still going to be talking about? Then another very, very important area is this word, uh, section two, which is the word, the proficiency in double entry. Double entry accounting technique and maintenance of word of accounting record. You should be very, very, very word. You should be very, very competent when it comes to word to double entry. And maybe some of us, and let me share my word, let me share my full screen. Some of us could have had some basic word, understanding of word of accounting before. That in accounting, there's usually a word, there's going to be a debit, and there's also going to be a word, there's going to be a credit as well. Mean that word in accounting, accounting, every transaction, every transaction is divided into what? A twofold. Every transaction is divided into a word, a twofold. Meaning that word now, we have a debit and we also have a word, we also have credit as well. There's a word, there's a debit and there's a word, there's a credit. 
there's a debit and there's a word, there's a credit. There's debit and there's what there's credit. Now, that is the word, that is the double entry that we are talking about. That there's a double entry in terms of word. And when we say a double entry, the principle, what the principle of double entry is saying is that for every debit, there must be a word, there must be a credit. Meaning that word, now, if you have a debit in one account, there must also be a corresponding entry in another account. That is sometimes we refer to as a word, a duality concept. Duality in terms of what there will be debit and there will be what there will be credit. So at the end of these courses, you should be proficient. You should have a competent in this particular area. It's a very, very important thing that every accountant, because majority of the things are some tax that you are going to be what you are going to be doing is going to be what there's always going to be a transaction so how do we want to what how do we record this transaction is very very well it's a very very important thing that every one of us should try as much as possible to learn so i'm saying is that, that there's a word there's a duality concept there's a debit and there's a word there's a credit and every accounting word every accounting transaction Every word, every accounting transaction can be divided into what? Into five. And that's why in accounting, we have what we call what? Element of what? Element of financial statement. Element of what? Of financial what? Element of financial statement. So meaning that what? Item that you can what? Item that you can see in the word in financial statement now can be divided into five. We have what we call the assets. We have also the word, the liability. We also have that of the word, the equity. We also have that of the word, we also have income. And number five, we also have that of the word, the expenses as well. So these are the word, these are the five words, these are the five elements of word of financial statement. Meaning that word, every accounting transaction can be categorized into word. Every accounting transaction can be categorized into five. Is it that it's an asset? Is it that it's a liability? Is it an equity? Is it an income? Or is this word? It is expenses. Now, and let me also do it. Let me also do something. And if that's what you are going to learn in today's class, I'll be very, very worried. I'll be very, very happy with that. Now, you know, we are talking about what double entry system, right? That is what the key on uh, the, uh, the principle. One of the, the principles that we use in accounting is double entry system. And what is the double entry system saying? What the double entry system is saying here, I'm saying what in this too. Proficiency in double entry accounting. What is the principle of double entry saying? The principle of double entry is saying that for every debit, there must be a word, there must be a credit. If you have a word, if you have a debit, you must also have a word, you must also have a credit. So what are the transactions that you are posting now? Which type of transaction are you recording? The transaction that you are posting in your word, in your respective word, ERP, in your ledger, in your journal, can be categorized into this file. Meaning that word, please don't forget, every accounting transaction is not what is not beyond the file. Assets, liability, equity, income, and what and expenses. And we already have a principle now that is saying that word, oh, if you debit one account, you must also credit what you must also credit another account. Let's say this is one. The number two will be what it will be credit now. If there's a debit somewhere. There must also be a what a credit somewhere. If you receive a certain inflow now to your what to your bank account, or we are going to credit you, right? But who is sending the money now? We we'll receive a what alert. Someone that is sending the money now will receive a debit alert. Why you now that you are receiving the phone, you receive a what now a credit alert. So you can see now that the twofold is what is working. If we debit one person, 
We are also going to credit what we are going to credit another individuals. So once you now what once you identify a transaction that oh this particular transaction now occur let's say for example now example one let's say a sales of one thousand error on credits. So on that word, double entry system, these are some of the things that we are going to be what that we are going to be dealing with. There's a what now, a sales of what now, 1,000 error on what on credit. So if you made a sales of 1,000 error on what on credit, one of our principles in accounting is that what principle of what double entry, that for every debit, there must be what there must be credit. So if you made a sales of what 1,000 area on what on credit now, then the double entry that we are not talking about now is that, oh, you now need to record this particular transaction now. You need to do what? You need to record this particular word. You need to record this particular transaction. In the what? In the appropriate word book. Now, one of the things that you should be able to do the first thing that you should be able to do is that this particular transaction, let's say you made a sales. Sales is what? And you are selling this on what? On credit. So let me say this is one now, and this is what? This is two. You made a sales of 1,000 euro. But when you make that sales, is it a cash sales? No, it's not a cash sales. It is a what now? It is a credit sales. It is a what? It is a credit sales. So depending on the word, on the agreement that you have with the word, with this particular individual, maybe it's going to pay in 30 days time, if it's going to pay in words in 20 days, 15 days. But as of now, when the transaction took place, you didn't receive any money. But you have delivered the goods to the world, to the customer. But the customer is not what is not paying them. So what we now need to work, what we need to identify now is that okay, well, let's now what let's now record this word, let's record this transaction in the words in the appropriate book. And don't forget what I'm trying to explain is that what I'm trying to explain the principle of word of double entry. And what the principle is saying that word for every debit there must be a what a credit. So now the next thing that you need to do. Once you see something like this now, you know, this is just a general overview class. We are still going to be talking about each of these intensively. Oh, I have a sales. You need to say now sales is what? Sales is an income. The new name that we call sales now is what is revenue. So sales can also be called what? It can also be called revenue. So I made a sales. And when we say revenue, revenue is a word. Revenue is an income account. Revenue is what is income account. Meaning that what based on our what element of financial statement, I know I told you that every accounting transaction can be categorized into what? Every accounting transaction can be categorized into five. The assets, the liability, equity, income, and expenses. So sales now is also known as what? Revenue. That's the main name that we call it in accounting. It's revenue. Is what now? Is an income account. Is an income account. So we are not talking about double entry system that you need to debit one account, then you also need to credit another account. So the account that you are going to work now, that you are going to debit now, is what we call what trade receivable. We call it trade receivable account. So I would debit what now? I would debit trade receivable account. With what now? With 1,000 error. Then I will credit my word, my revenue, with what now? With 1,000 error as well. That is what the word, the principle of double entry is talking about. If there's a debit somewhere, there should be what? Credit as well. Now, when you now say what? On credit, credit means that 
you are not receiving the money, you are not receiving the cash immediately. So that's why we have this, uh, we have an account that's going to accommodate that, called what, receivable word, receivable account. In the olden day, we used to call receivable, we used to call it what, debtors. I don't know, maybe some of us still remember. So if I say debtors now, it means that, oh, this individual, this entity, they are owing the world, they are owing the organization. So that is what, what the principle of double entry is talking about. For every debit, there must be what? Credit. For every credit, there must be what? Debit. Now, and I also make mention now that we have how many elements of financial statement? We have five elements of financial statement, meaning that every accounting transaction can be categorized into this part. Whether it's an asset, it's a liability, it's an equity, it's an income, or it's also what expenses. So you should be able to develop a word, a proficiency in this area. It's a very, very important thing that you should be able to know. And we are going to be doing this as we are moving in. Then the next one is what ability to identify and correct what omissions and error in accounting and financial statements. So you should be able to have the ability to correct what errors. Because mistake will always work, even though if we are using a computerized system, talk less of the word, the manual system, there's still going to be some errors. There's still going to be some mistake. So as an accountant now, as an accountant now, you should be able to know how to correct this error. You should be able to know how to do what you should be able to know how to correct this error. It's a very, very important accounting uh, tax that you should be able to develop. How to correct what? How to correct error. Okay. And if you want to work, if you want to correct errors, the first thing that we need to first of all identify is that, okay, well, that error is what? You know, error is simply means what? Mistake. Okay, what is the mistake? And the mistake sometimes, the mistake sometimes can be, the mistake sometimes can be what? The mistake sometimes can be, let me say, error. So in error now, it can be that, oh, amount. Amount not correct. It can be that, oh, amount is what is correct. But wrong words, but wrong ledger. That is uh, another one. Another, uh, another error can also occur in terms of what? Debit. Debit. Or it may be what? Credit and what? And credit. That is not in line with the what? With the double entry system. You know what the principle of double entry is saying that, oh, if you debit one account, must also credit another word, another account. So we cannot have a situation whereby it was what credit credit, it was debit debit. Oh, we can have one that that is the number one. That oh, the amount is not correct. It's supposed to be what? Let me say one. One now is supposed to be what? Let's say one thousand error. It's supposed to be what one thousand error. But we now record what we now record under here. That is the word. Oh, the amount is not correct. The other one is that well, the amount may be correct, but where you take to the ledger is not correct. And when we say a ledger, what do we refer to as a word as a ledger? A ledger is a word is a permanent word record of accounting transactions. Is a permanent word, the permanent record of word of accounting. Okay. So sometimes the amount is what is correct.
I'm sorry, here. Amount is what? Amount is correct. But in a word, in a wrong ledger, you're supposed to take it to what now? Let's say you're supposed to take it to, you're supposed to take it to purchase, purchase account. Then you not take it to what? You not take it to, let's say what? Motor what? Motor vehicle account. But the posting is correct. To that particular ledger is supposed to be in purchase account. You now take it to what to motor vehicle account. That is also a what is an error. The other one, which is the third one I explained, is the whole debit debit. Credit credit. So there are different words, there are different types of error. So as an accountant, if you're able to identify this error, and if you want to be good in what in how you can able to correct errors you must learn your word, your double entry system very well. Once you understand this number two, once you understand this word, you understand this number two very, very well, then there's no how you also would, you understand this one. Once you know what, you know your double entry very well, then correction of error is also going to be what a simple word, a simple things for you to do. Then another thing which is very, very crucial is that if you're able to have the ability to prepare financial statement, if you're able to have the word, the ability to prepare word, if you're able to have the ability to prepare financial statement, if you're able to have the word, the ability to prepare word, financial statement. And I think, let me see if I have the words, certain financial word, certain financial statement here. I think I have them saying them somewhere. But hold on. So now on, I can say, well, let me just say MTM words, annual report. So I think there's it. So this is the financial statement of what of MTN now. So another very important thing as an accountant, if you're able to have, is what, if you're able to have the ability to prepare word, to prepare this financial statement. And let me just check 130, let's say 120. Okay. Is that done? And let me just say 18. So this is the word, the financial statement of MTN now as a word, as a joint joint story. So as an accountant now, if you're able to have the word, if you're able to have the ability to prepare word, if you're able to have this ability to prepare this financial statement. So the financial statement that we are now going to be talking about, it cut across different world, it cut across different entity. How do we prepare financial statement for what? For a sole trader. How do we prepare financial statement for not-for-profit making organization? How do we prepare what? A financial statement for partnership. And we're also going to be talking about the world, the limited liability companies as well, which is a case of what MTM that you're looking at here. So how do we word, how do we prepare financial statement of such? Then you should also be what, awareness of various accounting technique and their use. And you should also, the last one is that we should be able to have ability to analyze and interpret what simple accounts with the head of what ratios. Simple account will be the head of what ratio. You should be able to, to learn how to what to calculate maybe gross profit margin, net profit margin, return on capital employed, return on equity, asset turnover, and the rest like that, which we are still going to be talking about here. So what are the what the chapter by chapter basis that we are going to be what chapter by chapter basis that we are going to be looking at, which is just the breakdown of these words of this content. The first thing is that what we'll be looking about what business and accounting. 
business and accounting. That is the first thing that we should talk about in accounting. Because it's when we have business that we have accounting. It is when we have what? It is when we have business that we have accounting. So we are going to be talking about what? Various forms of what? Of business organization. And basically, we are going to be talking about three of them. We are going to be talking about that of the word, the sole proprietorship. We'll be talking about that of the word, the partnership. Then we'll also be looking at the word, we'll also be looking about the LTD. We'll also be looking about the word, uh, not for profits making words organization. So we'll be looking about what these forms of word of business organization. And which we are also going to be talking about what in the later on, the preparation of financial statement of a sole trader, the preparation of financial statement of that of partnership, the preparation of financial statement in the world in a limited liability company, the preparation of financial statement for not for profit making organization. Please don't forget, those are the things that we are going to be learning now what in our subsequent class. Then the types of business, those are the word, the four, uh, in the four basically types of what business organization I will be looking at. So proprietorship, uh, limited liability company, or partnership, not for profit making organization. What are the advantages, what are the disadvantages of each of these forms of what business organization? We'll be looking at that. We'll also be taught then, after we know different types of business organization that can exist, then we'll continue to be talking about what, then we will now start introducing what, we'll go to introduction of what, uh, introduction to accounting and what, and business entity. Introduction to what, to accounting and what, and business what, business entity. Then we'll be looking about the what, the basis of what, the basis of accounting. And basically we'll be looking about what, we'll be looking about two bases of accounting. There's what we call cash basis, and there's also what we call what accrual word basis. We also have another one, which is what we call what commitment basis. But here in accounting, we'll be looking about these two. When we say basis of accounting, we'll be looking at what accrual word, accrual basis. We'll also be looking about what we'll also be looking about what cash basis. And there's also another one as well, which is what we call what commitment was. We also have what we call commitment basis. And that one is in what is in public sector accounting. It's now in financial accounting. In financial accounting, one of the two bases of accounting that we have is what we call what accrual basis. And we also have that of the word. We also have that of the, uh, this thing, what do we call this? We also have that of the word, the cash basis as well. So those are the words, those are the, two bases that we are going to be looking at. And in financial accounting, we use what? We use accrual word. We use accrual word, accrual basis. And when we say accrual basis, what does accrual basis simply means? And what does cash basis mean? In accrual basis, or let me look at, let me explain from the angles of what cash basis falls. On that cash basis, under the second one, under cash basis, you are going to record a certain transaction once you receive the money. Meaning that word now, if I make a sales, I make a sales of word of 1,000, let's say on today's words, 10, sorry. We have one slash, let's say 10, 06, and 2023. Let's now say, for example, now I made a sales. Let's say credit what credit sales. Credit sales of 1,000 there. And this particular customer, the credit terms, the credit terms is 45 days. That is what we agree. That if I made a word, a sales to you now on 10th of word of June 2023, you are going to do what? You are going to pay me in what in 45 days times. That is our word. That's our agreement. Let's not say, for example, now I want to prepare my financial or I want to prepare my monthly financial statement. 
I want to prepare my words, my monthly words, monthly financial statements. Monthly financial statement for world for June. I want to prepare my monthly financial statement for world for June. So since I have not received the word, the payment, I have not received the word, the cash, I will not record it as what, as sales on that cash basis. Let me explain it to you. You made a sales today of 1,000. And the credit terms is that what, oh, you are going to pay me in what? In 45 days time. And we look at 45 days now, and that is even worse. That is even maybe August, earlier, earlier of August. No. The next thing that we are now going to work, the next thing that we are now going to do now is that, oh, I want to prepare my words, my June. I want to do my word. I want to go for my monthly words, NPR. Now, if I'm using what cash basis now, if I'm using what cash business, I'm not going to what, I'm not going to include this particular word. I'm not going to include this particular word sales as my revenue in what in June, because I have no word, I have not received the payment. That is under cash basis. But under what now? Under accrual basis, and that's what we are using in accounting. On that accrual basis, I'm still going to record it as my word, as my sales in what? Sales in June. And let's even say that, oh, it's going to make payments in what? It's going to make payments in what? In July. On that accrual basis, you are looking at, okay, what was the date that this particular transaction occurred? Oh, the particular transaction occurred in what? In June. So our under accrual basis now, I'll still record it as what as sales for the month of what for the month of June. Whether you receive payment, whether we have received payment or we have no word, we have not received payment. So far that the word, the transaction occur within that particular period, I'll still record it as what as my sales. Whether is what is income, whether is that of the word, whether is that of the payment. So far that the word, the transaction occurred within that word, within that particular period, on that word, accurate basis, you are still going to record it. But on that word, the second one, which is what cash basis, cash basis wait to the moment that you receive the money and when you make the payment. So let's say, for example, now you are owing someone 1,000 error in June now. If it is on that cash basis, we are we are still we are not going to record it as a word as a liability because you have not paid. But under accrual basis, we are going to record it as a liability of what of one thousand. So that's those are the two bases of word of accounting that we, we are going to be coming across. But here, what we are using is what is accrual basis. Even though you have not what you have not received the payment, so far that the transaction has taken place, you record it. Even though you have not made the payment, or you are also owing someone 1,000 error, even though you have no what you have not made the payment, you are still going to record this as a word, as an expenses. Okay? So um, that is that. Then we also need, we'll be looking at what are the need for financial statement? Why do we need financial statement? Why? Why do we need financial statement? Why do we have to prepare something like this? The company that you're working for, they will have something like this as well. Why? Why do we need to work? Why do we need to prepare work? Why do we need to prepare financial statement? And I have a question, but how will we reflect that there was a sales at all? What? To reflect that there was this. Yeah, so if it is under what cash basis, it's not going to reflect as what as sales. Since we have not received the payment as at that particular period. But under Acura basis, even though we have not received the payment, it is what sales on credit. We are still going to record it as what as sales. We are still going to record it as what as sales. So those are the two bases. In Acura basis, we are going to record it as what as sales. But under cash basis, if you have no, if you, we have not received the payments, we are not going to record it as what as sales. So those are just the two. So why do we need to prepare financial statement? 
Why do we need to prepare what financial statement? This is a financial statement. Your company as well will prepare what to prepare financial statements. So what's the word? What's the need? What's the end product result of doing such? And can I hear from the word from the chat box as well? well? What do you think is the need of preparing financial statement? Why? You can just put it in the word in the chat box. Why do we need to prepare financial statement? What's the need of preparing the financial statement? The need. Why? Because for everything, if a company like this now issue this particular word, if you go on website now, you can see it at any point in time. Why? Well, what are they doing it for? So we have what we have different words, we have different need. There are some need you need to prepare financial statement. Even looking at it from the world, from the mandatory part, is required by law. Is required by what by karma. That as a company you need to what you need to file your word your financial statement. Even when you register your company with what with CAC. You still need to work. You still need to continue to file words. You need to, you continue to file return with them. And one of the words, the return that you need to file with them is that you need to tell us your words, your financial statement. A copy of your financial statement is also a part of the document that you're going to file with CAC. The tax authority also need that as well. So there are different needs why a financial statement needs to be prepared. If you prepare your financial statement as well, it's, it's also sh show to your what to your investor. It shows your result. It will help your what the investor to determine whether oh whether I'm still going to continue to work to partner with this company or I'm going to sell my shares. It is also serve as a word as a tool to potential investor that oh if you see MTM word now oh this is their revenue oh they are doing fine. That can serve as a word as a part of your decision to buy MTM shares. So financial statement serve as a word is to the investors now. It serves as a word as a means of evaluating the word, the company. You as an employee as well, you can also, even though you are not within the world, the financial, uh, you are not within the finance. You can also look at your what your complete financial statement as well. That oh, ask people in what in finance, how are we doing? Are we making profit? So that if your what your company is also performing better, that will also guarantee that your future benefit and other things that the company needs to sub to you will continue. The management of the company as well. It will also help the management to evaluate to evaluate their performance that, oh, how are we doing? What is our budget for 2022? What is our actual result? Why are we not meeting the target? Then it also serve as a word, as a management to do some work, uh, some root cause analysis. Root cause analysis in terms of what, where is the problem coming from? Why are we not meeting our target? Where is the problem coming from? Is it because our price is high? That's why people are not buying. But oh, what, what is even causing the problem? Or is it because you are not giving credit to work to some certain customer? So if management work, management prepared the financial statement, it will also help them to also benchmark that, oh, this is what now MTN. We can also benchmark with the world with LTEL. And other word, another company that we are worried that we uh, our operation is what is similar. So there are different words, there are different reasons for what for we preparing with our financial statement and component of financial statement as well. And I think component of financial statement is also what is also five. Meaning that well, when you see a financial statement now, a financial statement comprises of five components. The financial statement comprises of what five components. We have the word the statement of profit or loss. Statement of what of profit. Statement of profit or loss. And other words and other comprehensive income. And other words and other comprehensive words. And other comprehensive income. We also have one. We also have of changes. 
changes in equity. We also have number three, which is what we call a statement of what statement of financial position, which some of us can know before they used to call it what balance sheets. But the new name now is what statement of what statement of financial position. We don't call it what balance sheet anymore. Statement of what of financial what financial position. We also have another one called what statement of what statement of cash flow. Statement of words of cash flow. Statement of words of cash flow. And uh, number five is what we call what note to the word, note to the account. So these are the word, these are the these are the five word, these are the five component of what. These are the five component of what of financial world. These are the five component of financial world, financial statements. These are the five component of what of financial statement. The statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. We have the statement of changes in equity, the statement of financial position, the statement of cash flow, and the note to the account. And I think I still have here. So this is it. This is, this is the financial statement now, starting from what, starting from here. Then this is the first one. You can see, they say what income, what income statement. They also say what statement of what other comprehensive income, meaning that what they are separating it, just like what I have here by saying what statement of profit or loss. So they are preparing that one separate. They are also, And you can also what match the two together. That is, they will have one heading. Then the next one, after statement of or other comprehensive income, we have the word, the statement of what financial position. After then, you can also see that we have a statement of what changes in equity. Then the fourth one now will be a statement of what statement of cash flow. Then the fifth one now it will now be the word, the note to the word, the note to the account. This is not the word, the fifth one, which is what we call word, no to the word, no to the account. Okay? So these are the word, the five component of word of financial statement. And we are going to be looking at what each of these one after the other as the class is word, as the class is moving on. Then we'll also be looking about what business transaction. Business transaction, it can be what sales and credits. Uh, and it can be sales or credit, you can be what cash sales, you can purchase motor vehicle, transport expenses, insurance, electricity, and the rest like that. Those are business transactions. So those are the words. This is the first section, which is the introduction to what business reward and accounting. Then we'll also be looking about our words, our regulatory world, the regulatory framework as well. We'll also be looking about what regulatory world framework which is what we call what conceptual, what conceptual framework. And in our conceptual framework, I think I've identified some of them as well, which is one of the word, the conceptual framework is what element of word, element of word, element of financial statement. So this is part of our word, of our conceptual word framework. We have what we call what element of financial statement. And what are the elements of financial statement? We have that of the assets, we have that, uh, that of the word, the liability. We have that of the word, the equity. We also have that of the, uh, um, yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Do you have any question? I said equal. I said equal, equal. Yeah, 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 thanks for that. So there's asset, there's liability, there's equity, there's income, and there's also work, there's also expenses as well. So another very important thing is which I would like everybody to want to please to know very well is this. At least if that's what you are going to learn for today's session now, I'll be glad. Just learn it in advance. But we are not doing any practical aspect of it today. That will be starting from the next section. We have five elements of financial statement, right? We have the asset. We have the liability. We also have, sorry, the equity. 
So let me write it somewhere here now. I saying was increase and decrease. If you want to increase asset accounts, please don't forget to. If you want to increase asset accounts, you are going to debit. Why? If you want to reduce it, is what is credit. If you want to increase an asset account, there will be what? It will be debit. If you want to reduce it, it will be what? It will be credit. If it is a liability, if you want to increase a liability account, it will be credit. If you want to reduce it, it will be what? Debit. Same thing applicable to this. Now, number four, we have what now? Income. Same thing also applicable. If you want to increase an income account, it's credit. If you want to do what? If you want to reduce it, it's this. Then the last one is that we have what? We have expenses. If you want to increase the expenses account, what you do is debit. And if you want to reduce it, it's this. So please try as much as possible to just be looking at it. At least October is a little too stable for your yeah, exam. So just what, make sure you work, just learn this. And maybe majority of the things that we are going to be doing maybe for the next one month now, it will be around this. It will be David, 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 David class. So please, I'm saying this more in advance now. That please make sure you watch you learn this. It's as simple as this. So once you know that that particular transaction is an asset account, is relating to assets, and it's going to lead to what to increase. Let's say, for example, man, so that you understand what I'm saying very well, that we have a cash on uh, a cash sales of one thousand naira. We have a cash sales of what of 1,000 error. We have a cash sales of what of 1,000 error. So if you have a cash sales of 1,000 error, you can see there are two elements that is there. There's cash. And there's also what? There's also sales. Cash sales of what of 1,000 error. So these are the two elements. There's a cash, cash is coming, and we're giving a goose out what how much? 1,000 error as our selling price. Now, the next thing that you're not going to do if you are posting transaction in what's in double entry, once you know the word, the account that is affected, that's the first thing you need to learn how to do. Know the account that is what that is affected by this transaction. A cash is of what 1,000 error. Now, the account that is affected now is what cash account. And sales account as well. Cash account and what? And sales account. Now, the next thing that you have to now do is that you now need to tell us now that I have cash. I also have what? Sales. You, you are not going to think of it based on what element of what? Element of financial statements. That cash is what? Sales is what? And if you, if you look at it from the angles of the word, the financial statement, cash is assets. Cash is what? Cash is assets. Why? Sales is what? Sales is income. That's the first thing I asked you. Cash is what? Cash is an asset. The, the, the cash that you have with you, man, is the word, is your asset your resources. Then sales is what now? Sales is income. Sales is what? Sales is income. So that's it. Now, once you're able to work, once you're able to do this categorization now, the next thing that we now need to ask ourselves now is that, okay, 
is our cash increasing? Is it reducing? Is our cash what now increasing? Is it reducing? You know already that cash, this is the account that is affected. Cash is what? Cash is an asset. Sales is what? Sales is an income based on the element of financial statement. Then we now need to think of what now? Oh, is my sales, uh, sorry, is my asset increasing or is it what? Is it reducing? Is it increasing or is it what? Or is it reducing? So my asset is what now? Is increasing. Is increasing by how much now? Is increasing by, is increasing by 1,000. Sorry. My cash is increasing by my cash is increasing by one thousand word is increasing by one thousand naira. So let's continue. So your cash is what your cash is. Your cash is increasing by 1,000 naira. I'm please, sorry, please, can you all hear me back? Can you just confirm that in the chat box? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, okay, that's fine. So our word now, our asset is increasing. So if your asset is increasing now, is what? If your asset is increasing now, is what is debit. If your income, is increasing is what? If your income is increasing is what? Is credit. So you can see now, this one is credit. And that's how the, what, the double entry, that's how the double entry system works. There's always going to be these two fold. There'll be debits, and there's also going to be what? There's also going to be credit as well. So if your asset is increasing, is what? Is debit. If your income is increasing, is what is credit. So please don't worry. Um, don't forget this is is very, very important. If there's an increase in assets, there's an increase in liability, equity, income, and what. And you can see, you can even learn it on the quick way. So this and this have the same treatment. Your liability, your equity, your income have what they have the same treatment. The way you are going to treat your liability, the way you are, is the same way you treat your equity, is also the same way you treat your world, your income as well. And same thing also applicable to asset and expenses. Your, the way you are going to treat your asset is also going to be the same way you are going to treat your world, your, your expenses. Okay? So these five elements of financial statement now, this five element of what of financial statement. This. You see, in this particular statement, this is income statement. Out of these five element of financial statement, you see this income statement and this other, com uh, other comprehensive income. Every item that you can find in this word, page 23. Sorry, am I sharing my full screen? Okay, that's fine. Every item that you can find in this word, page 23, and what now, and 22, is either it is income or it is expenses. Please don't forget. Any item that you can find in word now, in this statement of word, in this statement of profit or loss, is just basically word two. Is either it is income or it is what it is expenses. Meaning that what in your statement of profit or loss, in your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, your item that you can find, every item that is here, they are just two based on the element of financial statement. Either it is what expenses or either it is what it is income. Now, when we now proceed to the word to the next one, which is what this statement of financial position. So the remaining three now, the remaining word, the remaining three, which is your asset, is your liability, and your what? Your equity, you are going to find it here. Your asset, the first three, asset, liability, and equity. Where are you going to find it? It's going to be here. 
meaning that this particular statement now, this is just a one page. This page 24 now only comprises of words. It only comprises of asset is there, liability is there, and equity is also there as well. Okay. Now, let's not be worried. We're taking it one after the other. And in the next one, which is statement of changes in equity, this one only comprises of what? It only comprises of equity. From the word statement of changes in equity. What this particular statement is just trying to tell us is the reconciliation of the opening balance and the closing balance. Reconciliation of what? Reconciliation of your equity as at what? Last year, as at 31st of December, 2021. With the balance that we have now, as the 31st of what? December, 20 word, 2022. It's just a word, a reconciliation of the movement. What are the things that occur that make your equity to what to change? This particular statement only comprises of what? Only comprises of that. From the word, statement of what changes in equity. Anything that is here relates with what? Equity. Then the fourth element of what of financial statement, I believe the fourth component, the fourth component of financial statement now is what is statement of what statement of cash flow. So in statement of what now cash flow, income is there, expenses is also there as well, liability is there, equity is also what equity is also there. So those were those five components of what, those five elements of those five elements of financial statement, your statement of what, your statement of uh -huh. cash flow comprises of that. And it's a very, very what a good statement. It's a very, very good statement to prepare. And even when you are evaluating company as well, we'll get to that point as well. Cash flow statement is a very beautiful way for you to evaluate company financial statement, even than the word the statement of profit or, or statement of profit or loss based on what you are trying to look for. Okay. So that is what that is that. Now, what do we now refer to as what as assets? What do we refer to as a word as a liability? What do we refer to as income? What do we refer to as what income or equity? And what do we even refer to as a word as an expenses? What are the words or uh, what are the meaning of what of each of these? element of what of financial statement. And let me start from the word from the one which is what asset. When we say assets, for something to be your asset, there are resources. Asset are what asset are resources that is being controlled by the entity. Asset are what are resources. When you say something is asset, is your resources. that you have control over. Asset are what now? Asset are resources that you have what? That you have control over. Meaning that what? Well, maybe the laptop that you're using now or the phone that you're using now. If you are the owner of it, it means that is your asset. You have control over it. It's not your office laptop. It's not your office telephone. It's not, no, it is what it belongs to. That is what we call, what that's what we call asset. And what is the purpose of having assets? The purpose of having assets in finance is for you to work, to generate income. It's for you to work, is to bring benefit to the world, to the organization. That as a result of you using it, continue what use, there will be a what inflow to the organization. There will be some certain inflow to you as a result of what, as a result of that. Okay, as a result of you what, as a result of you using it, there will be some what, there will be some inflow to what, there will be some influence to you as a result of what, as a result of continuing what, as a result of continuing use. Now, what are not types of assets? 
what are now what what are now the word types of assets we have two types of assets please don't forget what we are doing is just a general overview and everything that we are talking about in these our syllables is between this just these five everything that we are talking about is between this it's not and accounting is no word. I don't know, maybe some of us have experience of it before or not, but it's not a word, it's not a difficult, it's not, it's not difficult at all. It's not because I'm taking it, but sometimes it is easy to learn. And let me tell you something. In accounting, there are some parts that it is uh, you need to try as much as possible to understand the principle behind it. Meaning that what well, there are some topics that you have to try as much as possible to understand the word the meaning you need to understand the concept and what we are going to be talking about in one month's time now is concept most of them there's no really a format for it but they are what they are concept and you need to try as much as possible to what to learn it and there are some that is what that is format driven that if you want to learn it very well the first thing that you should try as much as possible to do is what understand the format understand the word the format in terms of the word the layout how are we going to present it and there are some that is not what that is not format based that is just what principle once you understand the principle debit this credit it oh you are fine so when we now say asset we say asset are what are resources that is controlled by who that is controlled by the entity that is controlled by the individual so what are now the types of assets that we have? We have two types of assets. We have what, two types of assets. Type of what, type of assets. There are what, there are two types of what, there are two types of assets. One, we have what we call non-current assets. Non-current word assets. Then the second one, we have what we call what current what we have what we call current assets. In the olden day, I don't know, maybe some of us, you can have some background knowledge of accounting before. This non-current asset, we used to call it in the olden day, fixed what, fixed asset. So me that what asset can be doing, right? be categorized into these two. Asset can be of these two types. Non-current and what? And current. And when we say non-current assets, non-current assets are assets <laughs> that's going to last for more than 12 months. That's going to last for work for more than work for more than 12 months. Are what we call what? Are what we call non-current assets. Asset that's going to last for more than what? That is going to last for more than one accounting period. Are what we call what? Are what we call current words. I'll be sorry. Are what we call non-current what? Non-current assets. What are now the example of what non-current assets? Look at the words. You can see it here. What are the example of what of non-current word, non-current assets? And let me even look for MTN Nigeria so that this one is the word, the group. Um, the group is in South Africa. MTN, uh, MTN Nigeria. So this is MTN or this is MTN Nigeria. A financial statement is starting from what page 18? Is this, is this correct? Please hold on, sorry. Okay, so there's it. At least this one is in our currency. <laughs> so we have the words. There's a statement of profit or loss. What's this? So what are now the words, the types of assets that we have? 
we have how many types of assets? We have two types of words. We have two types of assets. There's non-current assets, and there's also what current was current asset. So please, what are now what types of what non-current? What are the what the types of assets that can fit in under current? What are some that can also fit in under what non-current as well? So like property plant and words, property plant and equipment is an example of what non-current asset. And when we say non-current asset, are those assets that will last for more than what more than one accounting or more than one accounting period. We also have what we call what the right of use asset, ROU. And when you get to the words, when you get to the next level, which is what professional one, you are we are going to be doing what financial reporting, and you are going to be talking about IS 16, International Financial Reporting Standard 16, deal with what leases. And on that leases, based on IFRS 16, you are going to recognize the what are a right of use asset. Then we are also going to recognize the what the lease liability. So when you get to the awards, you can also see there's also a what a lease liability. And the way, okay, don't worry, I'll say explain this later. So right of use asset is a what is an example of what non-current asset. Now. Let me now also go further here. When we say non-current asset, this non-current asset is further divided into two as well. Non-current asset is further divided into what? It's further divided into two. We have what we call tangible. And we also have what we call what? Intangible. So we have what we call tangible work, non-current assets. And we also have what we call what, intangible. So when we say what tangible word, non-current asset, from the word tangible, it means that those ones that we can touch, that we can move, are what we call what, tangible word, non-current asset. And just like if you look at this financial statement, you can see PPE. Is a what is an example of what when we say PP, PP means what property, plant, and equipment, like the word motor vehicle, like the word furniture, maybe furniture and fleeting. Uh, we can also have what we can also have maybe delivery van. So, asset that we can what that we can touch that is they are movable is what we call tangible assets. And based on our syllables, as at this particular level, we are going to be dealing with only what, we are only going to be dealing with tangible or tangible assets. When you get to the world to the next level, you'll be talking about the word, the remaining on uh, this one. And the regulatory standard for this, for tangible asset that we are going to be talking about in our own syllables here is what we call what IS 16. International Accounting Standard 16, deal with what? PPE. PPE means what? Property, plant, and equipment. Property, plant, and what? And equipment. So the regulatory standard, and that's why if you remember in the early chart, I make mention of what? Accounting is simple to practice. In terms of what? The standard is already there. You just need to, there are some that you need to look at your, you need to make some judgments about how to apply because the accounting standard that we are talking about here, they are principle based. They are principle based. They allow you to also what to also think. It's not a rule based that they will ask you to do it this way and you must do it this way. So accounting what accounting standard also is their principle base. So, and it is very easy that, oh, if you're in practice, if you do not understand this particular accounting standard, you can ask your colleague because the standard is the same. You may just have some different interpret or interpretation sometimes, but the regulatory standard is the same. So at this level, I told you that the, the non-current asset, which is popularly known before as fixed asset, is divided into how many? It's divided into two. We have what we call tangible, and we also have what we call what? Intangible. So what are the examples of tangible? You can have some of these. Okay? So the intangible now, the what the intangible 
can be your word, it can be in terms of what software. Maybe some computer word, some computer word, uh, some computer software, some paid on uh, copyright. Uh, you can also have what maybe some patents. Maybe your brand. And the regulatory standard that deal with this is what we call what IS, IS 38. IS 38 deal with what intangible asset. But as at this level, in our own syllable as at now, we are only talking about what tangible. When you get to the world to the next level of on financial reporting, you are going to be learning about what you're also going to be learning about IS 38. IS 38 is the regulatory standard for intangible. Why for tangible, one of the what the regulatory standard is what is IS what IS 16. And IS 16 means what property, plant, and what and equipment. So these are examples of non-current asset PP, right of use asset. They also have what intangible asset, investment in subsidiary, contract acquisition costs, other investment. There is they have some DFA tax. When you also get to the financial reporting as well, you also be talking about what DFA tax, and that's the IS 12. I don't know, maybe some of us we are in practice as well. The IS 12 deal with what? IS 12 deal with uh, income tax. They deal with what? Income tax. And we also have some, some prepayment. They also categorize as a word as intangible word asset. So, what about current assets? And when we say current assets, Current assets are those what are those assets that is going to last within what within one year. That we are expected to what to realize them within what one year. But non-current assets are more than one year. But current asset is within a what is within a year. Current asset is within a what current asset is within a year. Why non-current assets are what are above what they are above one year. So what are the examples of what of current assets? You can see inventory. We are going to be talking about inventory as well. It's part of our what is part of our syllabus. We are going to be talking about what inventory. And the regulatory standard for what for inventory is what is IS2. The regulatory standard for inventory is what the regulatory standard for inventory is IS2, International Accounting Standard World 2, deal with what inventory. So that is also what that's also part of our work of our syllabus as well. We're also going to be talking about what inventory. And we can have what you can have different types of what inventory. Currently, we have three types of what. Sorry. Basically, we have what. Um, basically, we have two types of what we have two types of um, three. Sorry, we have three types of what inventory. There's what we call what raw material. There's what we call what work in progress, and there's also what we call what finish what finished goods. So inventory can be of what of these three form: raw material, work in progress, and what and finish what finished goods. So we are also going to be talking about what inventory as well. So inventory is an example of what is an example of current what current asset, trade and other receivable. When we say receivable, what does receivable means? In the olden day, receivable we used to call receivable uh, debtors, and what receivable simply means that what those individuals, those company, those entity that they are owing MTN as at this particular date. Those what those individual those what those entity that what that are owing us are what we call what receiving. Why those that we are owing are what we call what paying, are what we call what trade paying. In the olden day, we call it what creditors. So in accounting, we don't call it what creditors anymore. We call it what trade paying. Why those that is owing you, you now those people that you what you have borrowed money, you borrow them money. In accounting, we call those individual what receiving. Why those people that you you are owing are what we call what trade paying. Those people that they are owing you, you have lent them some certain amount, and they are yet to pay back are what we call what trade receiving. Why those people that you also 
you are owing them are what we call what are what we call trade paid and what we call trade paid. So current investment, restricted cash, and we also have what we call what cash and cash was equivalent. So these are an example of what of current assets. Then the next element we talk about asset now. We also be looking about what equity. So what are the what the, when we say equity? Equity are the residual what owner, the residual the residual interest of the owner. That is, let me just say well, what is left are what we call what equity. Equity, and you can even well, please just take it like this, that equity are those amount that belong to the owner of the company. Those amount that belong to who? That belong to the owner of the company. That's what we call what equity. So meaning that word from here now, starting from this share capital, down to what down to this retain any are uh, what belong to the owner of the world of the entity what belong to the owner of this company so what are now the world what are now example of equity what are the example of word of equity share capital is an example share premium is an example reserve is an example the treasury shares is an example Retain any is a word is an example. So these are what now, these are example of what equity. These are example of what of equity. Share capital, share premium, other reserve, treasury shares, retain any. Please don't forget, just understand it as, as now that when we say equity, Equity refers to what, what belongs to the world, to the owner of the business, what belongs to the owner of the business. Then the second, the third things that we can find here in this statement of financial position, just like I've make mentioned earlier, that in this statement of financial position that you're looking, this statement of financial position, this statement of what of financial position, there are three elements that is there. How many elements? Three elements of the financial statement is there. Assets, liability, and what and equity. Asset, liability, and what and equity. So we have talked about the asset, we talk about the, what the equity. So the last part then is what is the liability. So liability can also be further divided into two. We have what we call non-current liability, and we also have what we call current liability. When we say non-current liability, non-current liability are those liabilities that before we pay them is more than what is more than 12 months is more than what is more than 12 months but this particular word now when we now say current liability this current liability are those liability that you need to set to they are those or obligation that you need to set to within what within one year within what within one year So meaning that what well, this trade and other pay of 514892 now, we expect NTM to pay to fulfill this obligation before 2023. But this borrowing is still going to be there in 2023 financial statement because it's a what is a non-current, is more than what is more than 12 months. But this payable that you have here now. Is a word is a current, it's a current liability, is within what is within treatment. So these are examples of what of trade uh, of liability, categorizing it into what into non-current and what and current, and looking at the word now, the listed company, which is what MTN. So that is that. Then another thing that we also have in our syllabus. We're also going to be talking about what accounting equation. And when we say accounting equation, what is accounting equation? This is accounting what? This is accounting equation. Accounting equation is what? Asset equal to what? Equity plus what? Liability. Sometimes we call it A equal to what E plus what plus L. 
that is what we call what accounting what accounting equation accounting equation is what we call asset equal to what equity plus what plus liability and just like you can see here you can see this is the total asset this is the word the total asset so the total asset now if you had the word the equity you can see and let me just what think let me do it this way you can see our total asset is what is two million seven one seven one six you know the finance, this one is in billion so it's already represented in thousand dollars so if i say what now three three five six eight two plus one two one 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 six one Oh, sorry. There's still some. Then, if I also had words plus plus one one six nine one five seven. So you can see that we are having the same thing. If you had this now, three three five. 682 plus 1,221,161 plus what now 1,169,157. If you add everything together, you can see it's giving us what now 2,716,000, which is also the same thing with our what with our, our asset. Meaning that what if your asset is what is this, your equity must or uh, if you had your equity and liability as well. It must also give you what it must also give you the same thing as well. So you can see that the equity and the liability is also equal to is also equal to the world to the asset. That is what we call what accounting word, accounting equation. Accounting equation is what equity plus what plus liability. Accounting equation is what equity plus what equity plus liability. Equity plus work plus liability. So we are also going to be doing some work, some simple words, illustration as we are moving on, starting from our work from our next class as well. Then we'll be looking about what double entry. We'll be looking about what double entry. Then we'll also be looking about what sales and purchase. Then we'll be looking about what non when we say sales and purchase, at least from the word sales and purchase, you buy. You also sell. If you are buying, how do you do the recording? If you are selling, how do you do the word the recording as well? So, which is also part of the word the number four. Once you understand the double entry, is also the same thing as what we are referring to as the word the sales and purchase here. So, when we now what the next things that we're also going to be looking at is non-current asset and what and depreciation non-current asset and work and depreciation. And just like I've informed you earlier, that the non-current asset that we are going to be talking about here is only the word, the tangible. It's only, it's only the tangible. That there are two types of word, non-current asset. There's tangible and there's word, intangible. The only one that we are looking about in our own syllable asset now is only the word, the tangible. And the regulatory standard is what is IS 16, just like what we have in our words in our syllabus guide as well. So we'll be talking about non-current asset. And the non-current asset that we are only focusing on is the what is the tangible, not intangible. And we'll also be talking about what depreciation. Then we'll also be looking about what, what do we refer to as a word as a bad debt, bad and dark to debt. Bad and what? Bad and dark to debt. So in accounting, once you are selling on credit, and I think let me give you words. Let me just give you. Let me explain this. Then we'll come back. You can just give a voice a three minutes break. So we are going to be talking about what bad and dark to debt. So when we say what bad debt, what? And let me start from the moment that once you are selling on credit, once you are selling on word, once you are selling on credit. You need to make provision for what for bad debt. That is the accounting part of it. That once you're selling on word on credit, that if you look at the composition of your sales, there's a cash sales there. There's also a what a credit sales. 
So in accounting, once you're selling on what on credit, you need to make a provision for what for bad debt. Make a provision for what? Make a provision for bad debt. Make provision for bad debt. It's just like the mindset of what? Oh, if someone is owing you ten thousand naira, if someone is owing you what ten thousand naira, in accounting, I can't believe that there's a chance that that particular individual may not what may not pay up. There's a chance that that particular individual may not what. There's a chance that that particular individual may not what may not pay up. So accounting is now advising you as a business organization that make provision for bad debts. That out of out of that ten thousand naira that someone is owing you, we can just say that oh, he's not going to pay what. He's only going to pay six thousand naira. At least the way you are looking at the behavior of that customer, the way you are looking at the behaviors of that individual. So you cannot make a provision for bad debt as what now, or 4,000. So meaning that what now, our receivable now, is not going to be showing what now, 6,000 error. That we are, it's just a mindset that, oh, because it is better for you to what, to understate than to over. Because this bad debt now is an expensive. We are still going to debit our P or L with that particular amount. We are just trying to be what, to be prudent. So there's not a possibility that, oh, there are some times that, oh, that particular individual will pay the 10,000 euro. So if that particular individual not pay that, um, that 10,000 euro, you know, it's not going to affect us. But assuming that it's not, what, it's not, it's not even paying because we have made a provision already. So it's not really going to what, affect the, what, the business. So if it eventually what if, if, if this particular individual eventually pay all the ten thousand error, then the what the four thousand error that we have made as provision for bad debt, then we have debit our P or L initially. Then what we need to do is just to do reversal by crediting our what by crediting our P or L. So we're also going to be talking about accrual. We're talking about prepayment. When we say accrual, accrual simply means what owing. Accrua simply means what? Accrua simply means owing. It means what? Well, either you call it owing, you can call it what? Outstanding. You can call it what? Unpaid. So when we say accrua, accrua means what? Owing. And is a word is a liability. Accrua is a word. Accrua is a liability. Accrua is a word. Accrua is a liability. But when we say prepayment, prepayment is a word. Prepayment is an asset. Prepayment is a word. Prepayment is an asset. Accrual is a word. Is a liability. So how do we treat accrual in our words, in our statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income? How do we treat it in the words in the statement of financial position? We are also going to be looking at that as well. Then inventory, just like I make mentioned earlier, the regulatory standard for what for inventory is what is IS what is IS two. The regulatory standard for what for inventory is what is IS2. And what IS2 is saying that what inventory should be measured at what at lower of two things. If you want to measure your inventory in line with what IS2. If you want to measure your what your inventory in line with what IS2, we are going to use measurement of inventory is what is this. If you want to measure your inventory, is lower of this. A, cost, and two, NRV. And when we say NRV, NRV means what? Net realizable value. NRV means what? Net realizable what? Net realizable value. NRV means what? Net realizable what? Net realizable value. NRV means what? Net realizable value. So let's say the cost is what is 1,000 error. And the NRV is what now? The NRV is what is 800. Based on the requirement of what now of IS2, we are going to measure this inventory using what NRV. And what is NRV? NRV is simply is what? This is just NRV. It's selling price. Selling price. 
less words, less cost to sell. This is what we call what NRV. NRV means what net realizable value. So if your inventory is 800, that is the NRV is what is 800, but the cost of you producing this particular inventory or the total cost is 1000 M. Based on the requirement of what now of IS2, it means that we are going to measure this particular inventory using what NRV. So meaning that we are going to recognize what 800 in our financial statement for this particular what inventory. We are going to measure it abroad at 800. So that, um, that, is, that is that. And another thing, when we, are, when we are doing this particular topic, we'll be talking about what measurements. This is what, sorry, hold on. So this is one, we are going to be talking about one. one. Another thing that we're also going to be talking about in this IS2 is what we're also going to be talking about, certain, we're also going to be talking about what valuation of inventory. Valuation of what of inventory. Valuation of what of inventory. And if you want to value your inventory in accordance with what IS2, we have two ways that you can use. We have two mentors that you can use. One, you can use FIFO. And the second one, you can use what weighted what, weighted average what cost. FIFO means what? Force in, force out. FIFO means what? Force in, force out. Meaning that what inventory that come in force will be the one that what? It will be the one that will go out force. Oh, you purchase some inventory on Monday. You purchase another one on what? On Tuesday. If you want to sell on Wednesday now, you are going to sell the one of what? Of Monday first. You make sure that you finish what? All the carton that you receive on Monday, you exhausted that before you now start pushing the one of what? Of uh, this thing on Tuesday. That's what we call what? FIFO. FIFO means what? Force in, force out. Force in, force out. And we also have the word, the second one to do what we call what weighted average what weighted average cost. So when we get to what IS2, we'll be looking about what we'll be looking about this. Then the third thing that we are going to be talking about in IS2 is the word is the prior word adjustment. The prior word adjustment. We are going to be looking about what some, we are also going to be learning about some adjustment. Okay. So let me just give you what now. Let me just give you a three minutes break. Then we are going to come back in the next three minutes. We're almost through. This is just a what the general overview class. There's no really and another thing. Okay, sorry, thanks. On uh, doubt to depth. We also have what we call what doubt to depth. And doubt to depth is just what when we say doubt to depth, it's just it's the same thing as a provision for what for bad debt. When we say doubt to depth, it's the same thing as what provision for bad debt. So when we say bad debt, bad debt means that it has occurred. Bad debt means that it has what? It has occurred. But that to debt is that what is estimate. That one is what is provision. It has not yet what occurred. So there are two things. When we say bad debt, bad debt means that that customer can no longer pay. Maybe due to debt or maybe bankruptcy or something else. That is bad debt. But when we now say provision for bad debt, or we are saying what well, doubt to debt, provision for doubt to debt, it means that it has not yet occurred. We are just making a what? We are just making a provision for it. We are just making a what? A provision for it. But when we see something is bad debt, it means that, oh, it has occurred. But when we say provision for bad debt, it has not occurred. Or we say provision for doubt to debt, it has not yet occurred. Okay? So, um, we are going to be what? Just what? How many is left? That is what, at least the next one, just seven. They are not really much. So, just let's go for a three minutes break. We'll come back in three minutes' time. Thank you, everyone, for joining.
so thanks for joining. So uh, I think let's continue back now. Sure. So the remaining other parts that we are also going to be looking at, we'll be looking about companies, what financial statement. I'll be sorry, I've talked about what, sorry, control accounts. We'll be looking about what control account is a very simple topic. We have two types of what of when we uh, we have two types of control accounts. Is that you call it what? We have two types of control account. We have what we call trade receivable control accounts, and we also have what we call what trade payable ledger control accounts. So control account can also be called what total or total account. It can also be called what total or total account. And it's an account that allow what homogeneous account to be grouped together. It's an account that allow what homogeneous account to be what to be grouped together. Meaning that what account that are what that are related. Control account allows us to do what to group them or to group them together. So in control account, there are only what we only have two or two divisions. We have two division of what of control account. So in control account, control account is divided into what is divided into two. It's a very simple topic. Control account. So is it that you call it control account? We can also call it what total what. We can also call it what total account. And it's an account that allow what homogeneous account to be grouped together, meaning that what account that are related allow us to what to group them together. So control account have basically it have two or uh, two division. We have that of the, what we call what uh, trade receivable ledger control account. Trade receivable ledger ledger control account. We also have what we call what uh, trade word, trade payable. Trade payable ledger control accounts. So the trade receivable, the trade receivable can also be called for some time. The receivable ledger can also be called sometime. You can call it sales ledger. Sometime you can also call it what customer ledger control account. So those are another name that you can call it. They can also call it what revenue. You can also call it what revenue ledger. Okay. Then that of the word the payable. That of the payable can also be called what purchase. And you can also call it what suppliers. Suppliers. So those are the word, those are just the word, the division of word of control account. It's a format driven word. Is a format driven part. So we want to just understand what the format we are good to go. Then we'll also be talking about bank reconciliation statement, which is a very, very important what finance, what finance function. At least every month, we must make sure that what we do bank reconciliation or bank reconciliation statement. So in bank reconciliation statement, it mean, you know, when we say something is reconciliation, it just simply means that there's a word, there's a disagreement. Bank word, bank reconciliation. So when we say what bank reconciliation, it simply means that there's a word, there's a disagreement between two items. And the item here, one is the cash book. And the second one is the word, is the bank statement. So that's what we have on that bank reconciliation statement. So it just simply means that here, let's say we are having what 8,000 error. Our bank statement can be showing that, oh, we have what? We have 12,000 error. So at the end of the world, at the end of the day, we need to be able to what? To reconcile. Why are we, why is our card book showing what? 8,000 error. Why is our what? Our bank statement showing what now? Showing 12,000 error. So they are what now? They are different what? They are different things. They are different items that can cause this difference. They are different items that can cause this what difference. Why our cash book is showing what? Our cash book is showing 8,000 error. 
and our bank statement is showing what our bank statement is showing 12,000 naira. So what are the some of the words? What are the some of the items that can cause this word that can cause the disagreement between our cash book and our bank statement? What can cause those agreements? They are different. There are many words. There are, there are many items that can cause this word disagreement. So item that can cause this difference, one, we can have what, bank charges. We can have what we call standing order. Maybe you have given a certain instruction to the bank to make a, uh, a regular payment to some certain account. We can also have what we call words, unpresented check. Unpresented word, unpresented check. We can also have another one called words, uncredited check. Uncredited words, un especially let's say his words is, is a, uh, maybe you present a word, let's say you are using word now, you are using Unity Bank, you now present a word, a UBA word, a UBA check. So sometimes it's, it's not going to clear in the words in the same day, sometimes you usually use like what maybe if you deposit it today, then maybe it's going to clear what it's going to clear tomorrow. So maybe as at the time that you are preparing your bank reconciliation statement, although you have presented it to the world to the bank, but it is not yet what is not yet being credited to your world to your bank account. Because if you look at what bank statement, there's usually two dates. There's what we call transaction date, and there's also what we call value date. You can just look at your word, your bank statement that they usually send to you at the end of the month. You are going to see there's going to be two days. There's what we call transaction date, and there's also what we call value date. So value date is just is the date that it actually will eat your account. But the transaction date is the word is the day that this particular transaction occurs. So these are uh, they are different. We can also have words. We can also have what we call word. We can also have what we call dishonor check. Is a word. Is the sonar check is, can also cause the words can also be part of the word. The reason why our cash book is showing uh, eight thousand and bank statement is showing word. We can also have uh, what we call word. Uh, we can also have what we call dividend. An item as well. We can also have what we call word direct credit. We can also have what we call direct credit. Can also even have what we call words. Uh, can also have what we call direct debit as well. So each of these items, we are going to be looking at it one after the word, one after the other. So that is just what bank reconciliation is what it just entail. That our bank statement is not aligned with our word, is not aligned with our cash book. So we need to reconcile. We need to reconcile why have we word, why are we having such word, why are we having such difference. So these are just what these are just items that can cause the word. They are still more than this as you know, normal class as you are moving on as well. We'll be looking at what we'll be looking at what are the more items disagreement between what between those. Okay. So that uh, that's it. That's another topic. Call it what bank reconciliation word. Call it bank reconciliation statement. Then we'll also be looking about what correction of error. And I think I've explained that during the work, during the, the first, maybe the first 10 minutes. Then how do we prepare what? How do we prepare account as well? We'll also be looking about what companies, what companies financial statement, just like what, what you have here, the case of what of MTN in terms of what, how do we prepare this? We'll also be learning it as well. How do we prepare our what our statement of profit or loss? How do we prepare our work? Our statement of what? How do we prepare our statement of financial position? So all this statement that you have here is also part and parcel and parcel of our syllabus. How do we prepare statement of changes in equity, just like what you have here? How do we prepare the statement of what? The statement of cash flow, just like what you can see here. So we're also going to be learning that in our words in our classes as well. Then we'll be looking about partnership accounts. We'll be looking about what not for profit making organization as well. Then incomplete record. That's what the word for the sole trader. 
we'll be looking at that is the sole proprietorship. This is the account that we use to maintain for them. So not-for-profit making organization. What are the account that not-for-profit making organization prepare? The, re the receipt and payment account, the income and expenditure account, the learning that, the partnership account. How do we want? Then the last part is also going to be what a cash flow, what a cash flow statement. How do we prepare what the cash flow? Was? How do we prepare a cash flow statement? Just like what you can see here. How do we prepare what? How do we prepare a cash flow? Was? The cash flow statement. It's a very what? It's a very straightforward question. So this is just the what? The general overview of financial accounting. This is just to bring or what to talk about some of the items in terms of what each of these. We are seeking to we are seeking to be taking it word. We are seeking to be taking it one after the other. So what I'm just trying to do in this section is just to what to tell you some of the things that we are going to be doing in what in advance. So starting from the words, starting from the next class now, then we cannot start talking about the word the double words. We cannot start from the first part, which is the word the double entry system. In terms of what, how do we record transaction in the financial statement? How do we record transaction in the what in the financial statement? Then we'll continue to move on like that. So this is just the what the general overview of this particular what course, and I don't know. Let me just say this once again: accounting is very simple. It's not, it's not a difficult subject. Accounting is very very well. Just try as much as possible, understand the word, understand the concept, understand the word, the principle behind it. That what is it talking about? Once you understand the word, the principle. Oh, if this particular transaction occur. This is what I'm going to do. If this one will call, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I think I make mention of this. This I would like you to please make sure the words at least don't forget this. Starting from the words, starting from the next class, we are going to work, we are going to need it a lot. These are the words, the five elements of financial statement that we have. If there's an increase, what will you do? If there's an increase, how do we treat it? If there's a decrease as well. So we have five elements of what? We have five elements of financial statement, asset, liability, equity, income, and expenses. So if there's an increase in asset, what will we do? The debit. If there's an increase in liability, equity, income, or credit. If there's an increase in expenses, we debit as well, and we do the corresponding. Don't forget the principle, the principle of double entry. The principle is saying that what for every debit, there'll be what? There'll be credit. Every accounting transaction have to pull. That's what we call the word the duality concept. The duality concept that there's debit and there'll be what there'll be credit. There's debit and there should be what there should be credit. If you debit one account, you should also what you should also credit another one. You should also credit another account. You should also credit another one, another account. So that's just it. Thank you, everyone. And this is where we are going to stop for these words, this class. We'll continue from here in the words in the next section by God. So thank you, everyone. And if you have any question, please, you can try as much as possible to unmute yourself, or you can put it in the words in the chat box. If you have any question before we, was, before we end today's section. Yeah, starting from the world, starting from the next class, the material that I'm going to be able to share with you. This particular class is just a word, a general overview class in terms of words. And everything that we are talking about here is from the word, is from the syllabus. So this is just the word, the financial accounting part. You go to the words, if you scroll down, you're also going to see for another word for business law in terms of what, what are the things that you're going to be talking about. So this one is just basically what I'm just talking is basically the syllabus guide in terms of what, what are the things that we're going to be talking about. So there's a was there's a course materials and practice question that we're also going to be looking at starting from the next class, which should be shared. So in the absence of in the absence of I really appreciate it. All right, no, thanks, no problem. You're welcome. Thank so, you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, no, no question.
stop you from consuming the words. So thanks everyone. Bye for now. Then we got a lecture off.